Is going on, everybody? Welcome in to another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Thursday, December 7th, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, and the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. Stuart Turley, my man, how we doing today? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood up here in Bear Country. Absolutely. Uh, as we talked all week on the show, you literally are in bear country. It's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, we absolutely. Nonetheless, though, nobody ate our homework today, guys. Absolutely packed menu. Um, first up on that said menu, America's energy boom, U.S. crude exports soar to record high. Next up, Texas commissioner slams Biden's onerous methane rules that increase oil and gas prices will fly over to Britain, where Brits should stock up on torches and candles to prepare for cower, power cuts. That's according to Oliver Dowden. So uh, we, we we love a we, we love a good torches and candles to prepare <laughs> ourselves. Yikes! Um, and then we're gonna go uh, flop over to the EU, transitioning to insolvency. Europe's largest wind farm is facing bankruptcy. Finally, we'll move over to China. Plans for a nuclear power. 24,000 TEU container ship unveiled in China. Holy smokes, embracing that net zero future. Stool then toss it over to me. I'll cover, I mean, really the the the, the interesting fundamentals that happened today here in the in oil and gas markets. We saw crude oil dip below $70 for the first time um, in an absolute minute. So we will uh, kind of break down what happened there. Exxon also does some interesting forecasts. Um, so we'll cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. But before we do all that, remember the news and analysis you are about to hear is all brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy news. Stu and the team do a great job of curating that website, making sure it stays up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. Uh, you can hit the description below, check out all the timestamps and art links to the articles. Um, email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. Check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, our new data news combo product. I'm going to breath those, Stu. Where do you want to begin? Okay, let's start with our buddies over here in the U.S. America's energy boom, the U.S. crude export sort of record high. Michael, this is really, really pretty cool. And uh, there's some underlying uh, threads uh, in this article. Um, it has been those who are confused why the U.S. has spent tens of billions to keep the Russian-Ukraine war going. I thought this was an interesting article. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we've spent so much money? Uh, I mean, we could talk for hours about this. I think we, yes. we just, we, it so mainly, I think we spent a lot numbers. of money to attempt to topple what we see as a, you know, regime in Russia that we don't like. No, and I, I agree. Seaborne crude exports up 19% Ooh. versus 2022. This is just incredible. Yeah. Um, and you take a look at the, the map, Michael, if our producer could fly this in, the map showing, look at all the tankers. There's all yeah. the red dots in the Gulf coming out of the port of Corpus Christi and two or three other ports, uh, and they go all the way around the uh, Cape Horn. These are going out, our exports, our oil exports are going out on what's called VLCC, very large crude carriers. And I mean, these think the Suez Max 1 million, the very large go around the Cape because they won't go through Panama or the other. The reason that the our there's a a rumor going around there, and this guy alludes to it, is that we went to war so we'd sell more oil. But I'm going to call hoo ha on that theory. Why is Biden? You know, why is Biden putting war on the U.S.? I don't think he's that smart. I don't think this war has anything to do with energy. Why wow, don't need some very interesting things? I mean, I mean. Crude's under $70. So if you think going to war with Ukraine or getting more involved with, with the Israel-Hamas right. conflict, if you think that's going to raise oil prices, you're, you're under a rock, baby. We're at 69.69. Yes, and I, I agree. 
I thought the uh, allusion to this was not as was not very good. That's why I'm calling hoo ha on the illusion. Love it. What's next? Okay. See, I don't believe everything that's a random guy out on Substack. Let's go to the next one. Texas commissioner slams Biden's onerous methane rules that increase oil and gas. Railroad commissioner Wayne Christian, I'm going to reach out to him and get him on here, uh, issued a statement regarding uh, the methane rules. uh, Those methane rules we covered in uh, this week already. And that was based off of the Clean Air Act, and they are onerous and omnipresently horrible. Yep. Um, The listen to this: while the cost for hardworking Americans are up eleven thousand dollars this year, from the gas pump to the grocery store, his Biden solution to inflation is increased regulations that will make it even more expensive. Says Christian. Petroleum halts make more than 96% of everyday consumer items. Ah. (laughs) Oops. Again, with every rule, Chevron and Exxon would never admit this, but they love when the EPA does stuff like this because it makes it drives all of their competitors out to business because they are the one of the few companies that have the scale to be able to handle onerous regulations. Big business loves regulation. Don't remember that when they do this. They're only hurting the small producers. That's 50% of the oil produced in the U.S. is yep. with the small producers, though. Hey, that's my point. So they're 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 going, they're they're doing the kill shot. Exxon's gonna be fine. We'll cover them later. They're gonna be fine. Right. If you gotta spend a little bit more on methamphetamine, they'll be fine. You know who won't be fine? Like you said, the other 50%. So it's clear this, the second order of effects, as we talk about, they're not thinking about. No. Um, so anyway, that one kind of got me a little worked up too. I'm with Christensen. Good for Wayne Christensen. I, 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 you know, am I, you know, do I think he's the, you know, I, I've, I've heard some stuff on him specifically that he, he too may be in bed um, too close with big business. So, you know, I, I'd, I'll ask you. Know, him- We'll ask him. We'll ask him. I've we you know we, we got to get him on the podcast here, but at least he's attempting here to stand up. Um, good for Wayne Christensen. What's next? Hey, let's go to the Brits uh, across the pond. The Brits should stock up on torches, candles, and prepare for power cuts. Oliver Dowden says he's the deputy prime minister over there. Michael, that's kind of huge. It's a little crazy that the deputy prime minister is out there saying, prepare your torches and candles because power cuts are coming. I mean, what does he know? And that, that's what scares me is because when somebody makes that kind of statement, you've heard politicians, and that's like a big warning. What about uh, the head of the FBI uh, testifying in front of Congress? He's afraid of the terrorist attacks. When somebody like that says it, you got the deputy minister up there, a prime minister of England saying, get your candles. This is not Frankenstein or the humpback or anything like that going along here. This is a problem. Talk to me about these. He he, he says they also announced plans for a, quote, resiliency camp. What, what, a mandatory boot camp now for the English? Well, it, this is about the AI issues and the ah. tax on the grid. And they don't have the people to support it. So that's what he's talking about. The Russians have been hacking. It's kind of like what we have on our Newsbeat website, Michael. Uh, It is unbelievable. Iran yesterday, Iran had 1,468 people hit Energy Newsbeat. Do you know how many we had that were blocked for attacks, really bad attacks? I'm sure 50% of them. All of them. (laughs) That is the first time. Normally we get more attacks from the U S Iran finally (laughs) to the rest of the world yesterday. Yes. Go Iran. Anyway, uh, a unified government resilience website, which will provide practical advice on how households can prepare as part of the campaign to erase awareness as simple steps as individuals can take care of their resilience. Michael, it's it's insane. It's insane. 
you need to be prepared no matter who you are, where you are in the world, be able to take care of your family for any natural disaster that just prepares you in case there's another uh, man-made disaster. So I love how that, they launch an internet website to tell you how to survive without internet. It just, the, the irony should not be lost in that. No, it's pretty pathetic, actually. What's next? <laughs> Transition to insolvency, Europe's largest wind farm facing bankruptcy. Michael, I have never in my life imagined that we'd had the last, what, four months of absolutely the wheels have fallen off the yeah. renewables. I mean, you're all, you were, you were committing Harry Carey the other day. You were, you had your knife out and you're like, if I have to do another negative story on wind, I'm going to shoot myself. Well, put the gun down. Okay. The world's greatest Ponzi scheme is imploding. Wind and solar scam was never built to last. I like what this guy said. Simon Walker, the largest onshore wind farm is facing bankruptcy and has filed for reconstruction in Sweden. Uh, the Markle Benton ETT uh, the, is facing difficulties after signing a base load requirement uh, against hydro. <laughs> You can't make this up, Michael. No, you can't. Uh, you know, what's what's hilarious is that that wind farm is owned 75% by the, the China Gen General Nuclear, which yeah, is something. Oops. But I love the sign right in there, bankruptcy, next exit. Oh, here's, wind here's farms, why... we'll be getting off here. <laughs> they just ran over the solar panels um here's here's what <laughs> that was funny uh here's what i think is really uh funny about this is that the bailouts uh when obama bailed out solendra uh it failed the the bailouts are coming Buckle up. It's going to be printing a more money because you have all of these companies and all of these folks bailing out is going to be the next horrible piece of this puzzle. So let's go to the next one. I kind of like this story, Michael. Plans for a nuclear powered 24,000 TEU container ship unrivaled in China. This thing is huge mm -hmm. i think it's fantastic this is bigger than an aircraft carrier i yeah. mean it is right in that range is what the size of that uh 24,000 teu class ship is and i the reason i like it is it's a small modular reactor using molten sand it's not like what's in the uh military ships right now i think this is a true um a uh, way cool advance for getting pollution off of the oceans i think this is phenomenal no i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of transit that happens on the seas and if we could move to a as you see on the side of this uh the ship if they got plastered on the home page embracing a net zero future this is one of the areas where i could see small modular nuclear reactors coming in extremely handy much like long haul trucking for evs is probably a, they're not long haul trucking for evs but long haul trucking for uh ai and like the the autopilot stuff is the sweet spot for that i don't think we're going to be having ais driving you know driverless cars driving around the block but you might see a bunch of them flying down the interstates i see the same thing here a lot of this stuff could become ai driven up until that last mile the fact of the matter is getting nukes on this even lowers the amount of energy costs and makes a lot of this stuff more affordable. So I'm all for it. Oh, I am too. I thought this was a excellent uh, uh, article. And I think that the small modular nu nuclear yesterday, we had that story you and I were having a little fun with, with nuclear was the only answer. No, it's part of the major issue. I think without yep. nuclear, it will be tougher. But both are going to be bad because of the regulations, yep. uh, uh, legislation through regulation. Anyway, that's all I got tonight. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and kick it over to finance, guys. Overall markets down about three tenths of a percentage point. That's for the S and P five hundred. Nasdaq drops about five tenths of a percentage point. 
U.S. Treasury uh, 30-year fixed um, down 0.22 percentage points. 10-year Treasury bonds up 1.7 percent. Dollar index rises about um, two tenths of a percentage point. We did see crude oil, and this is going to hurt. Drops below 70 for the first time in what feels like an absolutely insane amount of time. Currently trading 69.50 as we record this about 6 p.m. Um, here on the six. Brent drops about one and a third percentage points down to 75.27. I mean. And what's interesting, Stu, is we had an absolute uh, drop of strategic uh, in the strategic petroleum reserve. Remember, we were estimating about a eight hundred thousand barrel build. We saw four point six million barrel draw, which did nothing to buoy prices. Again, what we did see was see a large gasoline build, about four point five million barrel build in the gasoline um, uh, petroleum uh, reserves, as we call it, or, or gasoline stocks, as it's more commonly shown. That actually has a lo- much larger effect um, and, and is really what's been driving a lot of this this softness, mainly by people saying demand is down. If gasoline isn't necessarily correlated uh, with the price of oil, but what it does show is that there's a lack of demand out there, and, and that's what's pulling down at this point prices. I mean, I think we need to do, hold a moment of silence for everybody who thought $100 oil was coming this year. I, I know we'll put you in there. Um, we, we got to put a few other whoa, people, whoa, Goldman text. Sachs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, you, you have been sitting there browbeating me like a rented mule. You've got a newspaper smacking me in the nose. And I have gone on record several times saying I have no clue what is going to happen on this. Now, I did say it would probably be around that hundred, but it, I have no clue right. because the pricing metrics are gone. You're right. You didn't say 100. You said 120. Fair enough. I'll 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 accept your uh, denial. You know, we got to throw Goldman Sachs in there. Um, throw your throw your favorite analysts in there, guys. Moment of silence, real quick. I mean, that's over because brutal, Stu. Um, now <laughs> I, I say all that to say, again, what's going on? Because I think th- why was everybody like Stu and Goldman Sachs and people that are smart? Why did they think oil was going to be a hundred dollars? If you had asked me if I thought oil was going to be 60 or a hundred six months ago, I'd say it's probably going to be more a hundred than it is 60. The question is, why is it here? And I think there's a mix of reasons. I think, you know, again, we're seeing the, the, the demand as we've swung back and forth between fundamentals and non-fundamentals. I think the pendulum is now moving back towards the, the pure fundamentals of it looks like demand growth may not be where it is. We see production growth coming. We see rigs, you know, and I, I don't want to say production growth coming, but we see the fact that that new with these new wells coming online that were drilled, in fact, in this higher oil price environment will only continue again to have that compounding effect. Uh, it's a little confusing, Stu. We also saw natural gas drop today. It's trading at $2.57. That's mainly due to... Um, uh, to some new weather data that dropped, but you know, interesting, interesting times in the oil and gas markets, folks. Let, let uh, me throw this at you. Yeah, I, I want to ask your opinion on this. Venezuela taking over the oil fields in in Guyana and and the next door neighbor and having uh, him, the uh, socialist guy, come out and say, "Here's the new map," and so he's already claimed the land, and the big oil companies are now having to. They're you think. In the past, the U.S. would not have gone to war over something like that. We would have seen prices go up. This is just as bad as there's it drones is. hitting ships, and we would have seen prices going on. You can't use a normal price model anymore because of this. We got countries invading other countries. We got countries take claiming oil, uh, uh, entire fields, and going, they're now mine. They're no longer yours. You go away. And nobody's doing anything. And it and it price goes down. I have no clue. But what is your thought on him taking it? For our podcast listeners, I'm playing the world's smallest violin. Mm-mm-mm. We get it, Stu. You're upset. Yes, I don't know. No, I'm I, I honestly, no, no, no. I, 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 I give him, give me every chance I can to rub in the fact that that, that oil is not a hundred bucks because you, 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 you personally weren't the only one. Why on that do side. you have that burr up your saddle, dude? I don't have a a I know. thing. I, 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 to to answer your question, 
it goes to show you that we swing back between fundamentals and sentiment. If we were in a sentiment driven market, exactly what you said, prices should have spiked, but it's not this. The flavor of the day is back to the fundamentals. And I think again, these, this rise in gasoline stocks is showing people that the demand may not be there and may not oh. come back. One thing I found interesting was that Exxon decided to drop kind of a really long uh, updated forward guidance specifically on on where they see their their output going. I thought, you know, you can you can read the whole uh, deck. You go to Exxon and check out their uh, um, corporate investor reports. The interesting part, though, Stu, they announced record CapEx spending of twenty four billion dollars in 2024 and wow. and project guidance of 22 to 27 billion of spending from 2025 to 2027 so th they're not messing around nope i think it's fabulous they also are investing um somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 billion into low carbon solutions um i love this quote from rbc exxon's going to need to convince investors on the merits of low carbon spending from here that's according to our friends over at rbc capital so very interesting um to talk about um where exxon is going they're they're, they're spending a lot on capex but they're diving into that um um the you know diving into that that low carbons market the acquisition of denbury obviously gives them that co2 infrastructure Structure. Also, their strip mine, their strip lithium drilling that they're doing right now. They're targeting. They're in Arkansas. They're drilling over there in the in the smack over formation. Um, anybody who's familiar with uh, the East Texas uh, East Texas shale plays, you'll you, you'll know the smack over formation uh, extremely well. So, uh, absolutely interesting stuff. They they expect to have production from that um, um, up that, and running. That, by but that's over in Arkansas. Yep, it yeah, is over in Arkansas. So is the smack over the brother that is dating the sister? It's exactly. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Stu, that's enough for me. What do you got going on? What, what should people be worried about? We, we're done for the week. Oh, yeah. I think it's been a wonderful, crazy week. Just interviewed uh, Congressman uh, Nunn, and uh, he is a cool cat. He is a veteran, and uh, that'll be coming out on Saturday, I bet. No. We have, no, we have actually Nate. We have uh, uh, some big dogs at Nate. That one's coming out Saturday, and then the other one will come out next week. Uh, Friday, you mean, because we got a weekly recap that will drop on Saturday. Thank um, you. I'm in a time uh, Which will cover all our top stories. But, no, a lot of interviews lined up. We appreciate everybody who stuck with us this week. It's been a long week, but uh, hopefully we've made it just a little bit easier covering <laughs> your energy news. Uh, we'll let you go, guys. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll see you back. Uh, you, you'll hear our interview tomorrow. you hear the weekly recap on Sunday. And we'll be back in your inbox on Monday. Have a great weekend, guys.